so in the last class we were uh, discussing the bls for pediatrics we have discussed the for one rescue and we have discussed for more than one rescue so that is what we have discussed now similarly we have done the uh, high quality cpr and we are moving on to the cardiac arrest algorithm see remember that in a child to develop a cardiac arrest it will take some time so they will give the warning signs much before so what we will be discussing after this algorithm is that there are certain entities that you need to understand there are some respiratory issues that they will commonly present with certain hypovolemic conditions that they will present with dehydration diarrhea and all those things so they have more commonly they have respiratory issues in children that you need to remember that very frequently they will come with respiratory issues you when you are working in the uh, pediatric ed you will always see that they will come with majority of the time fever running nose all those things so majority of the time they have respiratory issues so we have to differentiate different types of respiratory issues so that will be the uh, continuation of your paris algorithm so there is no algorithm for as such and how to approach to a sick child so we are we are dealing with an unresponsive child now there is a sick child that will come to you so if you are not able to recognize that this is a sick sick child and i need to do something without giving oxygen when to give oxygen how will you approach a child who is having cyanosis how will you know that this patient is having hypotension so children it is totally different so uh, normal vitals for an adult we can say that uh, 60 100 is a heart rate but in children for each age group the heart rate and the blood pressure varies saturation have doesn't change but rest everything will change so all those things you should know so uh, without knowing that uh, you will not be able to identify who is a sick child so that is very very important so those things we will discuss after uh, your all the cardiac arrest tachycardia bradycardia algorithms are over those three two three classes we need to take in on that how will you approach pediatric assessment triangle how will you approach a sick child so these things has to be learned so what we are discussing going to discuss today is basically the continuation just like what we did in our adult the patient had a cardiac arrest the child had a cardiac arrest you have initiated cpr or else where will you initiate cpr when the heart rate is less than 60 with signs of poor perfusion you have initiated the cpr then what you are doing that you are continuing the cpr and you are attaching the monitor and defibrillator clear then we are looking whether it is a shockable rhythm or whether it is a non shockable rhythm so that is here what we are doing whether the rhythm is shockable or whether the rhythm is non shockable so depending upon that shockable and non shockable rhythm you will decide so if it is a shockable rhythm we have to go for vf or pulseless ventricular tachycardia what do we discuss in the adult vf or pulseless ventricular tachycardia we need to deliver the shock so the problem here is that every child is not the same because each for a 1 year old child for a 5 year old child for a 10 year old child for a 12 year old child you need different amount of energies that need to be delivered for adult it is very specific you can give 200 joules but here it is not the same so you have to one important thing is that in pediatric defibrillation one thing you have to select the pediatric paddle that is the first thing you have to know your defibrillator and you have to select the pediatric paddle so that is very very important so pediatric paddle you need to select then the next thing you need to select the amount of energy that you need to deliver so what is the amount of energy that is one difference that you need to learn in a pediatric cardiac arrest so 2 joules per kg is what you need to start off with 2 joules per kg suppose you have a 10 year old 10 kg child you need to have 2 joules per kg means you have to start with 20 joules so 20 joules is the dose of defibrillation that you need to start and subsequent defibrillation see first shock you have given 2 joules per kg the second shock you can double this so from 2 joules you can go to 4 joules then like that you can go to 6 joules four you can add on 2 2 2 and go like that so that is a way by which you can go second shock you can go with 4 joules per kg subsequent shock more than 4 joules per kg you can go up till maximum of 10 joules per kg or maximum of adult dose that is 200 joules so i will explain once again you start with 2 joules per kg then what else you need to do you need to the subsequent dose the next dose 4 joules per kg then you can go like 6 joules 8 joules per kg or maximum of 10 joules per kg or else what else you need to remember is that you have to give the maximum adult dose that is 200 joules so it is a maximum dose of defibrillation that you need to remember so that is one important thing that you need to remember then again iv and iu access iu access again two attempts fail for an iv access you have to go for an iu access 
lean all the drugs that whatever uh, what not lean what all drugs that we can give every drug that you can give lean is for your endotracheal tube drugs so here you can give every drugs through uh, io we will have a station on io how to do io we will do uh, with the conclusion of your pals lectures so io access you need to remember then again you are looking whether it is a shock of bludam or non shock of bludam and similarly after the second shock after the second shock only you are delivering epinephrine so same allylt algorithm is the same but only thing the doses are different so 2 joules per kg is what we have start for the pediatrics and epinephrine here the dosing is also very important that you need to remember it is 0.01 ml per kg ml 0.01 ml per kg so that is the dose or you can remember 0.1 ml per so what i have written is wrong 0.01 mg per kg that is the dose or what you can remember is 0.1 ml per kg you have to be very clear this is 0.01 mg per kg you can remember this this is much more easier for you to remember 0.01 mg per kg because depending upon the dilution the concentration change but you don't need to remember 0.1 mg per ml that you just forget you remember 0.01 mg per kg so suppose again we have a 10 kg child so how much you need to give 10 kg child how much we need to give so 10 10 0 the dose is 0. sorry 0.01 mg per kg so 0.01 into 10 that is 0.1 is what we have to give for this child so what you have to do is that it very difficult because adrenaline will comes in 1 ml no so it is very difficult for us to give this way so what you can do no simply you can take 1 ml of adrenaline and you dilute with 9 ml of normal saline so each ml will become 0.1 mg clear so what you can do you dilute your 1 ml which is 1 mg of adrenaline you dilute it with a 9 ml of ns so totally it will become 10 ml so 10 ml will contain 1 mg so each ml will contain 0.1 mg So, if I am going to tell you, give 0.1 mg of adrenaline start to this cell, you just deliver 1 ml. So, it will be much more easy and accurate for you to deliver. Otherwise, 1 ml you have to give 0.1. It is very difficult. You can to take in the insulin syringe, and it is very difficult for us to give. So, the easier thing is that you just dilute it with a 9 ml of normal saline, and you make it 1 ml to 10 ml. So, each ml will contain 0.1 mg. Suppose you want to deliver 0.1 mg, give 1 ml of that. Suppose you want to give 0.2 mg, give 2 ml of that. That is pretty easy for you to give. So, that is the dose of epinephrine that you need to give. And you need to remember that dose of epinephrine is again. every 3 to 5 minutes you need to repeat repeat every 3 to 5 minutes and if there is no iv access or no io access you are not able to get 3 to 10 times you can give for endotracheal dose so that is what you can remember regarding epinephrine so that is epinephrine for you so what we have done we have a patient who had a shockable rhythm so we have started the first shock which is started with 2 joules per kg then subsequent doses is 4 joules per kg then what we have done we have gone maximum of 10 joules per kg or that of adult dose that is a maximum dose after the second shock we have given epinephrine and also you can consider for an advanced airway you can think of an advanced airway at that point similarly in the adult algorithm and next thing that you need to remember is that you have to give after the third shock is amiodarone amiodarone in adult it is we have said that it is 300 mg in children it is 5 mg per kg 5 mg per kg is the dose of amiodarone or you can give again similarly lidocaine 1 mg per kg so 5 mg per kg of amiodarone or 1 mg per kg of lidocaine also you can give to this group of patients you can use see here uh, uh, the quality of cpr they are not mentioning the use of etco2 but in an adult 12 year old child and all you can easily do with the etco2 monitoring but you can use etco2 for confirming your two position two position can be confirmed after your intubation endotracheal two position confirmation can be done with etco2 so that is the role of etco2 in pediatric cardiac arrest so what you need to remember is that in a shockable rhythm 
it is the same that of an adult algorithm but the only thing is the dose changes that you need to remember the dose changes first for your shock the second for your epinephrine amiodarone and lidocaine so the rest everything is the same just everything is the same you have to look for the reversible cause of cardiac arrest similarly on the other side a systole by pea just continue giving high quality cpr and you have to give the first dose of adrenaline as early as possible dose of adrenaline again the same 0.01 ml per kg is the dose that you can 0.01 mg per kg mg per kg is the dose of epinephrine that you need to give repeat every 3 to 5 minutes and you have to continue uh, with your uh, looking for the reversible cause of cardiac arrest so the next thing that you need to see here is that high quality cpr we already mentioned one third the ap diameter 100 to 120 per minute minimize interruptions change compressor every 2 minutes so that is what we do that's for the adult also if no advanced airway 15 is to 2 that is again we have discussed yesterday when more than one rescuer if advanced airway is in place one breath every 2 to 3 seconds not 6 seconds 2 to 3 seconds 6 seconds is for your adult advanced airway is in place one breath every 2 to 3 seconds so these are the differences that you need to remember and again when you comes to the reversible cause of cardiac arrest you have hypovolemia which was there in the adult also you have hypoxia hydrogen ions and hypoglycemia is one add-on that you need to remember so hypoglycemia is the one difference that you need to get in your pediatric cardiac arrest First, everything is the same that of your adult so hypoglycemia is the other add-on thing that you need to remember hypovolemia hypoxia hydrogen ion, hypoglycemia hypo and hypokalemia hypothermia then tension pneumothorax tamponite cardiac tamponite toxins thrombosis both coronary and pulmonary so these are the 5h and 5t's of cardiac arrest that you need to remember but it is not 5h here it is 6h you have add-on of hypoglycemia here so that is not there in your adult algorithm so what are the differences from the adult algorithm first thing you will start this one we'll go through the bls everything we will discuss yesterday so the first thing what we'll start is check for responsiveness tapping over the shoulder instead of tapping over the shin so or shield uh, or the toe you can do checking for response that is the first difference then next is pulse check pulse check there is a difference less than one year you have to go for the brachial then compression ventilation ratio 30 is to 2 when 1 and 15 is to 2 when there are more than two rescuers then witnessed and unwitnessed cardiac arrest witnessed and unwitnessed cardiac arrest that is the next difference then can you tell me the other difference what we have discussed yesterday breath bradycardia good bradycardia with less than 60 you have to start cpr then next thing what is the next difference that you breath every two to three seconds we need to deliver one breath then what are the other differences then what are the other difference depth one third the anterior posterior diameter one third the ap diameter then what is the next difference first difference in shock two joules per kg for the defibrillation maximum of 10 joules per kg or that of the adult dose the second one what is the second difference dose of epinephrine epinephrine dose is different then third one dose of amiodarone is different then fourth one next lidocaine dose is different then fifth one not dose is different you have to calculate there it was a standard dose here you need to calculate for 5 mg per kg and 1 mg per kg then the next thing is what hypoglycemia as the cause of your cardiac arrest so these are the basic differences between your adult uh, cardiac arrest algorithm and pediatric cardiac arrest so just remember these things so when you learn your adult cardiac arrest algorithm very well this is much more easier for you to understand that is why i just went quick through the algorithm because already this algorithm we have gone through we have already told you how to differentiate vf and vt so we are already uh, clear on it so what to be done just simple start giving high quality cpr only thing is those changes that you need to remember okay thank you